Okay, let's introduce the concept of spectral models. Uh, we talked about grids and uh, time stepping, spatial differencing, uh, different types of spatial grids. They were all in the x, y coordinate, uh, you know, trying to cover the sphere because ultimately this is about climate modeling. If we try to cover the sphere with these rectangular grids, grids and if you remember that the latitude, lo the longitude lines converge into the poles, you also end up with uh, other issues of what to do at the poles and so on. So there are uh, other m approaches to doing this called spectral models. Uh, so if we go back to our uh, simplified uh, one version of the shallow water equation where we had set uh, rotation to zero and did some uh, uh, derivation of the uh, d eta dt and du dt uh, term to get this uh, this wave equation del square eta del t squared equal to g h grad square eta. Uh, now this can be represented as eigenfunctions of the Laplace operator on a sphere of radius r. That's a lot of jargon. If you know what eigenfunctions are you know what the Laplace operator is and you know we are on a sphere. Basically this is very simple AX equals uh, lambda IX and such uh, 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 lambda is the uh, eigenvalue and uh, any uh, representation that is possible with A, uh, A minus lambda I X equal to zero gives us eigenfunctions and so on. I'm just being very superficial here but either you know it or you read it up or you just kind of uh, glide through this explanation here so we can write grad squared uh, y l m where l and m are actually zonal and meridional zonal and meridional wave numbers and that becomes uh, minus l times l plus one or r squared r is the radius uh, times y l to the m so you can see this is a matrix and being written in the eigen uh, function form so here y l m uh, as a function of latitude and longitude gets represented as p m l sine phi times e to the i m lambda where p to uh, m l sine phi are associated with Legendre functions of the first kind, basically spherical harmonics. Uh, okay, so we are on a sphere. Spherical harmonics are basically uh, have number of uh, latitudinal zero crossings. They are called not meridians and uh, not longitudes, where not latitudes, where uh, there are a number of latitudinal crossings as you go from pole to pole but the poles are not included in the not longitudes k n o t not okay so this equation then uh, can be written as uh, 1 over 4 pi sphere going from minus 1 to 1 d sine phi in uh, latitude 0 to 2 pi d lambda mm -hmm. uh, y l m times y m prime L prime which is just dummy uh, integration variable uh, so latitudinal longitudinal integral is 1 if M equal M prime and L equal L prime so you know where that happens uh, or is going to be 0 so the, the integral is going to have you have a value of 1 when uh, M and M prime uh, are equal and L and L prime are equal if they are not then uh, you get zero uh, elsewhere I think you've seen this form somewhere before uh, I'm sh sure I'm not missing any points here uh, so L uh, you will get 2 M uh, to be the number of not meridians or zeros on a circle of latitude at any latitude you will get 2 M zero crossings and the not latitudes uh, zero crossing on a longitude line pole to pole is L minus M 
but here we exclude the uh, poles as zero crossings, okay? Uh, not K, no T, S. So uh, then our equation, uh, uh, shallow water equation becomes D squared phi LM DT squared. Immediately you see that this has become an ordinary differential equation uh, uh, as compared to what we had before. Uh, equal to minus L times L plus 1 times GH over R squared phi LM where phi is uh, our uh, solution so it's replaced by a set of ordinary differential equation in M and L uh, the wave numbers in the zonal and meridional uh, directions this theoretically can be uh, expanded out to uh, 0 to infinity for L uh, and m would then go from minus infinity to, to infinity to infinity or minus l to l. Obviously you have a finite grid that you have to solve for so you end up with doing what are called truncations. So they are triangular uh, truncations uh, and rhomboidal truncations. So you have eta t phi lambda time latitude longitude uh, summed over minus m to m and m uh, magnitude of m to m l equals magnitude of m to m so there is a relation between the zonal and meridional uh, wave numbers uh, is uh, phi l m uh, t separated from a spatial function y l m phi and lambda so the denomination t m uh, so the truncations happen as t21, t31, t42, so it's number of uh, zero crossings. Uh, you can think of it as number of waves, wave truncation on a sphere. Okay, obviously the higher the number of wave crossings you allow, higher the resolution uh, you in with, with which you are capturing uh, your uh, solution. And if you have very low resolution, uh, like R15, R21, you will not even be able to represent the eddies uh, that are so critical, in, especially in mid-latitude atmosphere, for example, uh, where you get close to the baroclinic instability and so on. And the rhomboidal uh, truncation with denomination Rm looks like uh, this. Uh, eta t phi lambda becomes, again, minus m to m and uh, magnitude of m plus magnitude of m plus m equal to phi lm t uh, y lm phi and lambda so they look similar but just depends on how you truncate uh, the uh, knots in meridian and uh, longitude latitude okay not meridian and not longitude so this is just an example we had looked at uh, uh, rectangular grids, grids before as I said we get into this uh, pole singularity and often people uh, move the pole and place it on Greenland all kinds of adjustments are made uh, to get numerically past the singularity of the pole it's called a pole problem and here are two spectral element representations uh, triangular here and hexagonal uh, here so things get fancier there is uh, always more and more ideas emerging as to how best to represent uh, the sphere and how to write the equations in them uh, nothing is free as we said before there are other problems associated with spectral models like how to represent the Coriolis force uh, and what else can we get into um, Spectral models are much more complicated and coupling, uh, when you increase resolution, uh, obviously there will be coupling between individual wave numbers which makes for life to be more complicated. Uh, so treatment of nonlinear terms and Coriolis effects also becomes, oops, I don't know what happened there, problematic so we have to be careful. So spectral models, uh, lots of uh, models are spectral models and often when we represent the results, uh, let's say as maps of temperature, humidity, winds, whatever, uh, we say term, uh, the truncation is at t21 
356 or now you even have very high resolution models with T1500 and more uh, which obviously have finer and finer grids which means you again go back to saying what is the effective resolution in the spectral model uh, how many kilometer by how many kilometers so you still end up thinking like a rectangular grid uh, after you do your uh, spectral truncation and do your simulation and present the results as global maps okay I mean I'm going to leave it here you can read up more if you are going to get into modeling but otherwise just take it as an introduction to uh, spectral models and some of the issues in representing the sphere with the uh, spectral uh, grid or spectral elements as they are called. In the ocean it's not very common spectral grid because you have boundaries. Atmosphere is global so it's uh, easier but even there you have to represent topography and so on so spectral truncation can introduce numerical errors there, produce false waves, Gibbs phenomenon and so on and so forth. Uh, in the ocean uh, when people do coastal models and you want to go into estuaries and so on spectral element models are used they can be more accurate for representing very uh, complicated channels uh, coming out of land onto the ocean and so on but mostly most ocean models ten tend to be uh, just uh, rectangular grids, grids uh, not necessarily uniform, there are many ways to stretch them as we said before in uh, X and Y directions or uh, in one direction or the other. Okay, so let's leave it here.